Good morning. Um, first thing this morning, I need to apologize because right now, it's like eight o'clock in the morning, you guys are just getting a first glimpse of yesterday's video and realizing that it is 34 minutes long. Yeah, sorry about that. I got home to edit last night and realized I had actually 46 minutes of footage and I trimmed it down to that and I thought, oh, this is bad. But according to my YouTube poll that I put up at 10.30 last night, you guys are okay with it. So it's not, I'm not gonna get in the habit of making 35 minute videos. Um, I want them to be 15 to 20, but that was an exception yesterday. So I apologize, hope you enjoyed it. One of the things that I trimmed out of that video was an update on our tractor. So we'll do it now. Um, Jack was up yesterday and he has got a hole drilled in uh, through that stud. I don't know, I can't zoom in on it real good, but there is a hole all the way through it. He has not gotten it out yet. Um, said he couldn't get an extractor to bite and turn it out. So gonna have to keep working on it, but he is making progress. So that is good. One thing that is a little concerning is the torch sitting there, but eh, his deal, I told him, I told him he has to do it and not to ruin our $60,000 engine. So hopefully he knows what he's doing. As for today, we've got to go down, transfer them beans back into the boxes that we took them out of when we were treating yesterday, and then we'll get started treating some more beans. All right, we are ready to start dumping some beans. So this was the last box I treated last night, and we're gonna go dump it back in that one, which is the last one that got emptied, yeah. You may also hear that heater running in the background. And you may wonder why it's running. Well, you probably don't, because you don't know that it's 63 degrees outside right now. It is, it's actually pretty nice. Uh, but in an hour, it's gonna be 50 degrees. And by, uh, by tomorrow morning, it's supposed to be 23 outside. So it's gonna cool down real fast. So I'm gonna keep the heat running. Um, first thing to do is make sure that this door is closed so we don't spill beans right through the bottom. And then we just open it up and hope they come out. Excellent. We'll dump that box and when it's empty, we'll set the one up top right here next to it. And we'll get the next one and just keep dumping. Then we gotta put our lids back on and zip time down. There's all 10 boxes transferred, lids put on, zip tied, good to go. So now we need to stack them up and get them out of the way. And this is where I start running into trouble. It's where I need a bigger warehouse. See, it, my warehouse is not full by any means, as you guys can see. However, it's nice to have all of these rows here be their own variety, which is fine, and that works really good. But I don't want to put these beans back in this row that I took them out of because then I bury the ones that are untreated and I gotta get to. So do I set them off to the side and I don't know, I'll figure something out, but this is where I, what I need to do is just ship them out and get rid of them, right? Yeah, that'd be the answer. All right, well, I figured out where to put these beans. So I'm just moving them out of the way. I do like my nice big electric forklift that I can move two boxes stacked at once. Makes this go a little faster. I do go pretty slow though. It makes me a little nervous because it's tall and top heavy. So that row that I'm putting them in is next to where they came from. I actually have a different variety that's supposed to go there. I just haven't got any of them yet. Um, 
So we'll have to move them at some point, but I need to start getting some of this stuff shipped out of here after I get a few of these treated and we won't have so many to work around. Okay, so now that we got those out of the way, we're gonna get our next ones out and ready. Uh, we're gonna do some of these ones on the end here. These are 22, 2230 Nexus, they're a 2.2 bean. These are the earliest ones that I sell and plant. Uh, we're gonna treat six boxes right now. All right, I got these six boxes out, opened up the lids. I did stick my thermometer in there just to see. It says 57, I'm gonna give it a little bit, see if that temperature comes down, but our beans have definitely warmed up, that's good. Uh, before we start treating though, we've gotta do a little cleanup. So I don't get a ton of beans on here, but I wanna clean up the stuff on the platform. There's a few down in there. And then we gotta try and clean out our auger a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna work on that. I'm just gonna shop back the stuff off the top to start with. So I got that cleaned off. The next thing is to clean out the auger and the, the atomizer treatment stuff. So we drop that and pull this out and we'll see what we got. Not terrible. So it's wet, uh, but there's no beans too much stuck. Just a few, just a few beans in there. So we'll clean that up just a little bit, get all them beans out and uh, that will be good to go. And then yeah, down in there, we gotta get those beans out of that auger. So the easiest way that I found to do it is actually just turn the auger on and let it run. And they all roll backwards right out into our pan. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, well, that is better there. So we've got that cleaned out. Everything up top looks okay. I know it's still orange, but it's gonna be that way. We're not gonna get rid of the orange. So uh, we're gonna push this back in. This is what my elbow length gloves are for digging down in there and stuff. So let me take this off, clean it up a little bit. We'll get that all put back together. And uh, I think we're ready to go. Mix up some more chemicals. Okay, I've been letting my pumps mix stuff for a little bit. I'm gonna let it keep going for a few minutes yet, but uh, we're just about ready to measure out uh, the next batch of treatment. I need to sit down at my computer and uh, figure out how much we're gonna need for this next batch of beans based on seed size and uh, how many we're doing. The amount of cruiser and yellow and apron won't change, but the amount of water will. All right, I got uh, our chemicals in. This one is mixing, our water's in over there. We are ready to set some beans on. We do not need to calibrate again because we're running the exact same mix uh, product through the tank as we had yesterday. So it already knows the calibration factor to use. So we're good. We're gonna get um, the new variety loaded in there because I gotta do that yet with the seed size so it knows uh, how much is going through there and then we'll be ready to start. Okay, so the only thing that I had to change as far as my recipe goes is the water rate. That's gonna change with seed size. Uh, yesterday we were putting on 0.91 um, ounces of water per seed count unit and today we're at 1.19. These beans are bigger. It takes more fluid, more water to cover them uh, and so we keep the chemical rate the same. We want the same amount of chemical but we want to keep our slurry volume the same. It's kind of complicated but this is what we need. So uh, I've got that all set up. We are ready to start so I'm going to hit the start setup button. Make sure we got the right variety, which we do, and the right recipe, which we do, and we hit start. We gotta open our gate. Hopefully they come out orange to we'll start. Pretty good. So my forklift died. I am not a forklift mechanic. I am certainly not an electric forklift mechanic. I have no idea what's wrong, but it won't go. So I shut it off and I disconnected the battery and I'm gonna let it set here for five or 10 minutes. We'll see if maybe something resets in the computer and it will let it move, but it'll turn on, power up, and the mast will go up and down, but it won't go forward or backwards like the, the motors that run the wheels are not work. I don't. I don't know. This is the last thing that I need right now. But I guess I'm gonna go down to the farm and get the forklift from there, drive it down here, and at least I can finish treating these six boxes. And then I'll probably call it and wait. I guess if that doesn't is working yet, I'll have to call a tech tech to have them come out and work in it for me because just what I needed, right? 
Well, this sucks. Don't mind me. Just cruising down the road with my forklift. I guess I'll just be thankful that I have something else that I can use and keep this process moving. So hopefully I can get that other one at least out of the way. If it doesn't run, I don't know how I'm going to move it. Because I can't get to my boxes or my treater the way it sets. Well, I was able to uh, push the forklift out of the way using the other one, and I got my treater started running. And then guess what? I came over here thinking, I wonder if I can get that pump to run to put them forks flat on the floor, right? So, we start it up. Oh, now it's not gonna do it. Maybe. And look, just like normal. What the heck? I don't understand, but I'm not going to complain. I am glad that it works. Apparently the motors got stuck in a bad spot and I just needed to move it a little bit. I don't know. If you guys know anything about electric forklifts and why mine was doing that, I guess I should have filmed more of what it was doing for you. Sorry. I don't know. It just wouldn't go. Um, all right. Well, at least we got it fixed. And now I got two forklifts down here. I don't think it'll help me much because I don't have two drivers. So I know I showed how this process works pretty good yesterday, but one thing I didn't get to do was a chance to talk about why we use these and some of the aspects of what exactly we're doing here. So let me take a second and do that. Cruiser Max Vibrant, which is our base treatment in this jug, is a combination of three different fungicides and an insecticide. And what they do is they keep that seed from rotting and from being attacked by diseases that are in the soil so that it will grow and have a better chance to grow, especially in cold and wet conditions. So we try and plant beans earlier and earlier all the time and cold, wet conditions are more and more likely. So this seed treatment helps protect that seed and seedling because they're systemic, in, um, they're systemic so the roots of the plant will actually absorb that treatment and take it up and translocate it through the leaves and the stem of the plant so um, like uh, in our soils we deal with a lot of pythium, phytophthora, uh, different kind of diseases that have long names that you guys have probably never heard of but that's what the fungicides are for. The insecticide will keep uh, grubs and wireworms and bugs that live in the soil from eating the seed or the seedling and they will also protect uh, from things like uh, bean leaf beetles that come in in June and will eat the leaves of the beans when they're small. So that's what we use that for. Um, the yellow color and really the red of the cruiser is just a marker. So uh, the colorant is there to tell people, hey, these beans have been treated. Basically what the law says is that treated seed, no matter what seed it is, corn, beans, wheat, rice, sorghum, alfalfa, whatever, has to look unnatural. So we all know what beans look like, right? Just like this. So we could put the chemical on beans and have them look exactly like that when they were done, or at least pretty close to it. But then you would have no way of knowing. So by treating them a bright red, orange, green, blue, purple, whatever the color may be, if any of these beans happened to end up at an elevator where we sell the grain or a feed yard or anywhere that they use beans at the end process you would know instantly those are treated don't use them we can't do them in fact if when we sell grain or anything to an elevator they find one bean that is treated they reject the entire load they, we got to keep them separate and out of the food and feed supply so that's why they're treated uh, with a bright color like that. That little forklift delay cost me my lunch time. It's one o'clock and I haven't had lunch yet. I got one more box to do and then we're gonna go. All right, we got those six boxes all treated up, so that's good. Um, since I don't have to tell my wife that I have to buy a new forklift now, um, we're gonna take the old, uh, farms one back down there and that means I don't have to walk because I, that's how I got here. I have no other way back. So uh, we'll do that and then I'm going to go eat some lunch and we'll come back, uh, transfer these beans back just like we did this morning. We'll start with that box over there and then uh, try and run another batch yet this afternoon. Definitely getting colder out here. It is, oh, 
It is not 63 degrees anymore. Maybe 40. And windy. All right, well, I got my lunch, so let's uh, start transferring beans over into that box and backing around, or, you know, jumping them. So um, we'll do that, and we'll treat some more. Before I get too far with uh, sealing up these boxes, I want to make sure I grab my sample to, to keep for myself, which is uh, going to go in this bag. I also have got some of these bags here. These are for sending samples into our lab uh, where they will test them to see how much chemical is on the beans and whether or not we're getting the proper rates on. And so they give me five of these for free every year just to ensure we're doing a good quality job. I'm going to fill this up out of this sample and uh, we'll send it in and hopefully we're, we're right on where we're supposed to be. But uh, it's just kind of a quality control thing to make sure I'm doing a good job. Okay, well, I figured out what I want to treat next. I don't know. Can you guys see all them boxes? I have 12 boxes of 3195s. Yeah, it's a lot, but we've got them. Uh, they all need treated. They all need Cruiser Max Vibrant treatment on them, so we're going to do this. 12 is going to take me a while. Uh, this will be the last ones that we do today, I'm sure of that, but uh, it'll be a good chunk of beans done. So. Uh, I've got to take lids off. This is going to take a minute. Have I mentioned how much I hate these stupid blue tabs? Gosh, they're a pain in the butt. All right, I've got all the boxes off. Um, treater is almost ready. I just got to shop back the top off, get those few beans cleaned up. I already cleaned the auger out, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to get our chemicals started mixing again. They're probably okay, but we'll just let them recirculate while I'm uh, cleaning that up, and then we'll start filling up our uh, chemical tanks. All right, well, we're treating beans again. I've got a lot of chemical in this tank. That's about as full as I've ever had it, up around nine gallons. Uh, I think I had almost six gallons of cruiser, two and a quarter of uh, yellow, and then a little over half a gallon of the apron. So there's quite a bit in there. Got it all mixed up good. Um, yeah, just like everything else, we're running good. All right, well, we're moving right along here. Working on box number six at the moment. That's halfway. Last box of the day. Here they come. Maybe. Maybe. There they come. We got a bunch of orange beans. All right. We are done treating beans for today and for the week for that matter. I gotta write down some records in the computer and just make sure I got everything up to date there. And uh, we're gonna let them beans set overnight. Heck, we probably might let them sit till Monday. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, good deal. So uh, between yesterday and today, we treated what uh, 28 boxes of beans. That's a pretty good start. I'm happy with that. Um, this keg of cruiser, it's almost empty. Yeah, we went through almost 15 gallons, 13 point something. So there's a little bit in there yet, but we're going to have to bring more down here when we get back to treating some more. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I got another tractor update for you. We're going to go back to the shop right now. Go. Oh, look what we have here. Jack got it out. And he found the piece that broke off somehow in there. So, uh, yeah, he got it out. He said he got the hole tapped good, so the threads are good in there. Nothing got screwed up. So all we got to do is thread a new stud in and put a nut on and put uh, everything back, clamp our hoses in that we had to take off up there, and the tractor will be good as new. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to run up to the John Deere dealer and get those pieces that they've got all there and ready for me. Also think I got to get a couple more batteries for a tractor. Uh, Phil was moving stuff around yesterday and the 8430 wouldn't start, which I figured was going to happen. So with that, have a great weekend, guys. I will see you next week. Um, we're going to, I don't know, maybe keep treating some beans, uh, probably get the bean planter in the shop here so Phil can work on it. And uh, maybe I'll get some stuff delivered. I don't really know what's going to happen next week, but we're going to keep working on stuff. I know there's plenty to do. 
hopefully they won't uh, keep me quarantined to my house where I can't even go outside. That would be brutal, but I don't see a whole lot of people during the day most days, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue, right? Um, I'm working on that logo in a little intro video. I really thought I would have it done this week. I just haven't had time. I've been crazy busy here, so... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that's coming. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me if you haven't already. Although, if you've already subscribed, don't hit it again because I lost like five subscribers this morning and I don't know why. You guys, I don't unsubscribe, please. So, um, yeah, and leave me some comments down below. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. See ya.